The following program, Chefs About Town, is made possible by funding provided in part by Grey Monk Estate Winery, producers of distinctive wines for discriminating taste, all approved with the Vintners Quality Alliance seal, your assurance of international excellence. And the Whole Kitchen Caboodle from Gadgets to Gourmet. The Whole Kitchen Caboodle at City Square has what you need. And Souk Harbour House, a restaurant inn by the sea on Vancouver Island. Purveyors of regional Canadian cuisine are proud to be sponsors of British Columbia's food and wine arts program, Chefs About Town. My name is Gary Fessler. Welcome once again to Chefs About Town, the show for people who really love good food. This is a cookery program that focuses on the very best chefs, foods and wines of British Columbia. And today I'd like to introduce to you one of those chefs. He's someone who I think is one of the best in Canada. He's a culinary gold medalist. He's the owner and chef of La Belle Berge, a beautiful restaurant in Ladner, BC. May I introduce to you Bruno Marty. Bruno. Hi Gary. How are you? Thanks. Uh for the introduction. Oh, you're welcome. You're all true. Yeah. And I uh, just read what you wrote down anyway. Oh, that's no, good. That's know. no, that's good. I, I well, like to write those things. Welcome you know. to my kitchen again. It's my pleasure to be here. And uh, let's do some cooking. Yeah. And today we're going to be preparing some, some duck. Beautiful duckling. Beautiful yeah. duck. Duck in blueberry sauce, which uh, is uh, again uh, local blueberries, BC, particularly Richmond. Has lots of uh, uh, blueberry growers. This is a classic dish that you do at the restaurant too, isn't it? You've been yes, doing this for many years. For 12 years. 12 years. And it uh, has been written up a few times, like Homemakers Magazine. And uh, naturally, uh, this, there's always a little problem. And the problem is when you do this, like we do today for two or for four people, you don't have all the ingredients like the brown stocks, which you do with the bones. Right. So because I have continuously, it's on the menu, naturally, I make the stock today mm -hmm. from the bones and use it tomorrow. So you're so fortunate that way. You, you have uh, continually ducks in your kitchen, so you can do that. Right, right. So uh, uh, if somebody wants to do it really well, I think the best thing to do is uh, maybe make a duck the day before the way they used to make <laughs> it. Keep the, keep the carcass and make the stock for the next day and then make a blueberry Buy sauce. Buy a duck. Wreck it, yeah, and then Make use that for the sauce, for the yeah. stock. Okay. Well, yeah. we better get started. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I also know that uh, sometimes in the household, the duck is uh, not considered as being an easy product, be it because of the fattiness or, or be it because of not knowing how to cut the duck. But today we're going to make it, and we're going to make it very simple. So what we take, we take a frying pan here. Now, when you buy the duck, I always wash the duck first, and then I take these out. And I use this so that the duck doesn't stick to the bottom. So I take this. The neck, the giblet, the The neck the and heart. the giblet and the heart. After I had, I had washed it already. Right. And I have a string here. And the this reason, is a beautiful looking duck. This is actually a Wenzel duck. Now, again, uh, it depends a little bit what kind of a duck you have. Because just like anything else, it depends what this bird has been fed with. Right. In order to see if the fat is a meltable fat or if it is too solid and doesn't melt well. So now I, this is a Wenzel duck, as I mentioned, and I have been using this for years and I... So this is I a BC product? To, I wouldn't want to use it, uh, any other duck for this. No, uh, it is a BC product, but you, you know, there is many different uh, ducks available here mm. in BC. So I think you can do it with any duck. The only thing is if you have a duck and you see it's very fat. Now this one isn't so fat. You can see the meat on both sides. That mm -hmm. means it's not really that fat. If you have a very fat one, then what I would suggest is that you start off with a little water in your frying pan, and the water will give it a little steam, and the steam will actually throw out some of the fat from the bird. 
But we better put this in the oven okay. if we want to. Now, again, just uh, to... 500 degrees for half an hour, and then 450 degrees for an hour. Now, well, what else I have chosen here is, first of all, we're going to make it for a, a plate for four. Okay. okay. And uh, as you can see, I've chosen f colorful vegetables because Beautiful I believe color. Yeah. it's necessary. And seasonal, too. And seasonal, Think because now it's have. autumn, yeah. yeah. And some chanterelles, fresh chanterelles, which are available now. Uh, red tomatoes, I mean, red in tomatoes are red, but... It's for the, beautiful. For the eye you appeal. can tell that they're yeah. well. I mean, I've seen a lot of uh, in super uh, in, in supermarket stores. I've seen a lot of tomatoes that are green that have vine ripened, uh, picked out vine ripened la labels on but, them. But this Obviously one, they're not red. These one actually are a special breed. Yes, they, they are a special BC breed. BC hot house, and I don't, you know, I don't yeah. think you can special really go breed. wrong with a tomato yeah. like no, this. They're good tomatoes. Now, what kind of squash is this? Now, this here is banana squash. Banana squash. Okay. But you can really, I mean, you can use spaghetti squash. I like to use a, a squash because it really is very local and it is not as appreciated as it should be by the people. I'm glad you said that because yeah. I think squash is one of our most underrated foods in, in British Columbia. We have I don't know how many dozens of different varieties from pumpkin to uh, acorn. Um, it it has a, such a beautiful color and, 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 and such good food too. And, and yellow makes it so, uh, the, make the plate yellow, red, green and as I mentioned before a good plate always should have color. I lo love these little butter balls. <laughs> well, I made them just for you, actually. You know, <laughs> Great. For you. Thank you, Bruno. Just in case we do have breakfast Thanks. right after this uh, or okay. dinner. Okay, now that's for the sauce, because the sauce has to reduce. I think I make it right now. So we make a caramel sugar, just like, uh, just like we would for a crepe. Mm -hmm. I want a little more. It's for four people. Nice frying pan, heavy. Yeah, right. Uh, these are my pans, and I, I, I really like copper skillets for this type of thing. They, uh, they conduct the heat beautifully, and uh, they're lined in stainless steel, and nice pans. Yeah. Exactly. You could use a wooden spoon, actually, for doing this. But um, yeah, you should. Well, most people have pan. one at their home, so they, will, uh, they won't do like I do. They'll do like I say, right? right use right, a wooden exactly. spoon. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Let it caramelize a little bit so that you get the flavor of the caramel. Okay, so so far we have sweet butter, some sugar. Sugar, yeah. How much sugar? A I teaspoon? think, uh, no, about two teaspoons. Two teaspoons? Yeah. Not that we're really uh, uh, too crazy about absolute uh, measurements, but just to give you an idea, a couple of teaspoons. Because we cook, you know, by feel. The same, the same goes with the vegetable. Mm -hmm. I mean, here you can make it sweeter or less sweet, but because we're going to put a little vinegar, you need two spoons. It'll counteract it, yeah. right. But, you know, like the vegetables, I mean, you could have used, I could have used uh, green beans and I could have used uh, red cabbage or, you know, all kinds of things. Even though red cabbage doesn't particularly go well with the, with the sweet sauce, but... Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's great. This is just butter and, uh, and sugar in it. Just, it smells yeah. pretty good. <laughs> Here is my orange juice. So we're going to put in a little vinegar. Now this is white wine vinegar. Where's that fire extinguisher? <laughs> Just in case. So some fresh squeezed orange juice. Uh, I guess about what quarter of a cup. Well, right this is that. about this is about five ounces. What I've just put in, yeah. which is about five ounces. Yeah, you know, a little yeah. more than a half a cup. Okay. Now we're going to also try to use the juices that come out of the duck to put in here after. Now how much longer does that duck have? Well that duck just went in the oven and here it should have at half an hour. Half an hour. Right. Half an hour at 500 degrees and then, and then an hour at 350. Yeah. Okay. Now again, uh, the duck can be eaten in many ways. You go to some places and they'll give you a duck breast medium rare. Mm -hmm. And that's acceptable. But I have found that the majority of people here like a duck well done. Now, if you cook them only for one hour, you probably have quite a chewy duck. So you must cook it until it is properly done. And that is done at a slow heat. I, I personally prefer my duck medium rare. Well, I, yeah, but it's hard to serve like that uh, to everyone in, in a restaurant situation. Well, you have, to, you have to kind of adjust your cooking also to what the public wants. Well, to your guests, wants. yeah. I mean, if I have you who come for dinner, I mean, you, you know. can ask me for a medium rare duck and I'll, and I'll certainly make you one. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if we can put this in the back, and just let it reduce. While in the meantime, I want to uh, blanch those tomatoes which I brought here. Our BC hothouse tomatoes. 
they, they actually cost less because they have a tag on it so that uh, for the labor that you That's do right. here. <clears throat> actually, they are very beautiful tomatoes. It hasn't been so a bad year for tomatoes this year in nineteen. In general, yeah, no, it has been a good year. 1991. What year is it? <laughs> 1991, yeah. <clears throat> uh. I just heard about the wines in France that they had actually quite some bad weather. Uh, some rain at the end of the season and Ooh, you know, I was grapes. I was thinking that um, we are going to have quite a, a good wine because of the, the hot summer they had but mm -hmm. if they had a hot summer and then the and last then a minute lot of, some rain, then a lot of rain it uh, pops up all the the grapes in with water yeah and, uh, I'll get that there you go okay thank you now in blanching anything you just want to put it in boiling water for a few seconds maybe nine seconds ten seconds but the intention is actually is to is to shock it. You first bring it into boiling water, and then you put it into very cold water. And the shock between the two will actually get the skin loosened between. And it'll stop the cooking process, so you don't wind up with mushy uh, tomatoes as well. Yes, you can actually you don't want to cook at this stage. You yeah, really only right. want it blanched. You only want the skin off. So as you could see, these tomatoes were quite ripe, which beautiful. is uh, good. Good. The way do. they should be. You have. Can we turn the rear down a little bit? You just let me know when you think it'd be a good time to pour some wine or talk about the wine. You want me to cook first, no? Uh -huh. A little bit. But if we have a break. Okay, now, um, yeah, I also brought first. the little chanterelles because chanterelles, again, are in season now. And BC, I think, is quite blessed. We have seps, we have chanterelles. It's wonderful. We have pine mushrooms. And any of those More else. would really go with this dish. You know, what, whatever I have chosen is, uh, is my choice. And if you would do it and you would go to the market, you can choose whatever you want. I mean, spinach would go well with this dish too. Depending on what's at the market, what looks That's good to right. you. That's right, yeah. But it has to be a little colorful though. I mean, if you buy nothing but green beans and, and broccoli and peas and, you know, you wouldn't have the, the color picture yeah. that you really want. But, exactly. But you've got to think of, uh, of a little uh, beauty But here we too. have a little green, red and, and yellow of the squash. That sauce is really smelling great. Look at the, how ripe those tomatoes are. Oh, so we had such a, a wonderful Indian summer this year. August was horrible, it was very wet, and then all of a sudden September and October so far have just been just gorgeous here in D.C. I brought the grater here. Now this is the squash, and I think one of the simplest things, I mean you can cut it into cubes, you can make balls, but one of the simplest things is to just, to just make long stripes mm -hmm. And then just butterfly it very slightly with a little water. You don't even have to put much seasoning like salt and pepper or anything because they have a flavor quite on their own. And, and a delicate flavor it's too. It's good to taste what it's intended, it, what, was it, what it was intended to taste like. I'm glad you brought that up because I think it's, I always preach the virtues of, of using the very best ingredients and, and cooking, cooking those foods, those ingredients uh, to the best of their advantage to really bring them up out those flavors out and not to uh, not to you don't there's no reason when you're using extraordinary uh, product like this to subsidize with uh, a lot of seasonings no, you don't I, want to do that I, be, I believe that you know simple, I, I, keep it simple and clean I think that the uh, items like this you know they have its beautiful color you do too much to them and uh, you will actually defeat the purpose of using it exactly yeah you've done a lot of work for nothing really no shallots okay now the shallots are for the chanterelles. <laughs> you might want Very to cut beautiful your knife. shallots a little slower than this. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You would like me to slow, to cut them slower? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just saying to our, to uh, people oh, watching. Oh, you mean the customers? Yeah. The, the people watching? They yeah, they can do it like that, slower. yeah. <laughs> These are gorgeous knives. My Japanese knives. They're, they're beautifully balanced and uh, very light, sharp. And as you can see, I'm using shallots, not onions. Because Why they is that? They, they are a more subtle flavor. They're not as, um, as powerful as onions. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they won't, they won't change the taste of what you're cooking as much as if you use an onion. Mm -hmm. They tend to get sweeter when you cook them too, although they're good raw in, in vinaigrettes yeah, and they, things. Yeah, they turn sweet, yeah. Oh, man, uh, that smells. Great. It anyway, this great. is the plate we are going to put it's our platter. Our this duck is platter. the platter we're going to put the food on. And I also have a little something here 
which is a... What? What? Oh, rice! <laughs> Surprise! It's actually, uh, it's actually just a little mixed, uh, mixed rice. If you want a peppermill uh, later on, I have one, by the way. I didn't mention that. Oh, yeah, I saw it. I think she was sitting over there. Yeah. Yeah. Here we have our sauce. As you can see, it starts to... It's really getting nice and brown and... Thicken up a little bit, too. Mm, I wish you, could, wish you could smell this. <laughs> ah. Now, the chanterelles, we don't want to cut them too fine. As you can see, they're very dry, and that's because... Why we, don't you want to cut them too fine? Well, because you don't want them to fall apart. You want them to stay whole. If you cut them apart too fine, then you won't really be able to see what it is. Exactly, yeah. You want to see that they're chanterelles and not... Other, otherwise, they could just be a fine diced mushroom of any type. Yeah. You want to recognize what you're eating, you know? That's... Do we want this think, fire on? This uh, one? It's just to get, uh, keep us warm. Uh, oh, is it? Because I just lost all the hair off this arm, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> now that's because you keep going like this. I know, I know. I, I think I'm part Italian. Uh, Part talk, Italian. Talk with my hands. All right, now what I wanted to do is I want to take this here. Oh man, this is going to be great. We're going to use this as a heater here. See what Bruno means by color. It's, uh, you don't sacrifice the look of, of the, of the uh, end result for flavor, but it's very important that it looks as appetizing as, as it's going to taste. Absolutely. I mean, you, you eat first with your eyes. If something mm -hmm. doesn't look good, why would you want to eat it? No, that's right. You know, so, yeah. so let me put this now in the oven. Okay. Wow, listen to that duck. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's coming along. So now, What now, what's next? We want to do the chanterelles. Okay. Because they're a little dry, I'm using a little extra butter because they, uh, we had such a, a dry season in the last while, and these are from the yes. Vancouver Island. We haven't had much rain. And uh, the chanterelles have, uh, I mean, they're so beautiful because when they're dry, they tend to last much longer. You know, you can keep them for, uh, you know, two, two weeks in the refrigerator and yeah. don't have to don't worry about start to get, it. If they're uh, wet, moldy, yeah. you only have a few days. Yeah, you, you don't have, have that kind of away. time. Now, what about drying chanterelles? Since we have so many uh, mushrooms in BC. I know. I actually did uh, try did myself try? and it, uh, it's kind of a heartbreaker. Once you see them dried, they don't you look saw them fresh first, <laughs> you really say to yourself, I'm really not sure if I want to do I this. I think I'll just wait. In, when they're in season, I'll use them when they're in season and when they're not in season, I won't use That's them. That's right. You yeah. eat them and they're available That's and... Right. Uh, uh, the rest of the year, we just uh, use other products does it, that are in season. Right, I agree, yeah. Now, I did bring a little brandy here, and I think we're going to put this, this sauce in there. This is getting huh? wicked. <laughs> but it is quite a wicked recipe. <clears throat> but it is beautiful to eat. And, and I uh, love duck so much, and this is uh, a great recipe for this time of year. Being right now, it's late, late October. We have all of these great products, and, and duck is... Uh, is, is, is one of the fowls that I love the best. But there's one more thing that I have to say, and that is that, let's suppose now you're not particularly a fan of duck, and you say, right. uh, well, I like duck, but uh, I don't mind having a chicken. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. Mm -hmm. You can make a chicken, beautiful chicken breast, oh. or a whole chicken, exactly the same way, with, the with same blueberry, oh, with the yeah. same veggies, yeah. and you yeah. have a beautiful dish. Actually, blueberries mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, and pheasant, or blueberries and chicken, they go really well together. Oh, yes. Blueberry is not a very sweet fruit. No. That's why it is quite good in... Uh, it has enough acid to cut through uh, you know, with pork be, or anything. To be used. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You're getting so, thirsty? Uh, yeah, like actually, a actually, I just you're, wanted to see if the wine that you chose actually would match this sauce of mine here. Why don't we use the wine in the sauce? Do you want uh, to do that? No, actually, we're going to use a little wine to deglaze the pot okay. where the, the oh, duck good. is cooked in. Good. And then we, uh, we, you know, we get the flavor in there. Okay, well, but first, I like you haven't to taste tried, you haven't tasted it, so you I don't never even know. Put anything in there without tasting it first, you know that. When you told me what uh, you want to prepare today, uh, I, I picked this wine because I think this wine will go really well with the duck, the blueberry sauce. But uh, I'd like to get your opinion. It probably would even go better with the ducks with cherry. You know, this is a, a mouthful You're of cherry, some cherry just by putting the nose in here. This is uh, homegrown, you said? I was keeping a surprise, yes. This is uh, 
this is a wine made by a friend of mine, Gunther Lang, and his wife, Christina. And they have uh, a Farmgate winery in Naramata, BC, which is actually the first winery in Britain, the first Farmgate winery in British Columbia. Now, what does Farmgate mean? Do, is that the Farmgate means, Farmgate, well, there, there are Farmgate wineries, then there are estate wineries, then there are the major wineries or commercial wineries. Okay, which means so it just a, goes in size. Okay. So a Farmgate winery is only allowed uh, t uh, to produce so many gallons of wine per year, and, and, the, and the estate wineries as, wineries as well are only allowed to make it's a little, little bit, bit more. It's a little bit like a cottage wine. A cottage it's wine. small, can do what they want. They make very small amounts of wine. The, mm -hmm. far, the, the Farmgate wineries make very small amounts of wine. Uh, these people uh, aren't in it for the money uh, because it's so much hard work, and they can only make a small, vol you know, small uh, 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 volume of their product. So these are, these are people who really have a great deal of heart and make wine with a lot of tender, loving care. And, uh, and, and, and Gunther certainly has here. This is his Marichal Foch. This is a, 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 a rare beer. bottle. This is a 1988. Now you can get, I believe, the 1990 is still available, but uh, this is a 1988, and uh, Marechal Foch is one of our red wines that do really well in BC. In BC. Let's try it. Yeah. Cheers. You mentioned too, the cherries, and a little black currant. Black currant, yeah. But it's. It's, it's very full and it's fruity and a nice acid. It's beautifully done. Also balanced. for the Maréchal Foch, uh, only being uh, two and a half, three years old. Yeah, and this is quite uh, this is quite uh, quite a drinkable wine. A lot of people think of uh, Maréchal Foch as being a very soft wine too. This this wine is it, it is it is a bit soft, but it's not. It still has a lot of acid. It has tannins. Tastes good. A lot of berry flavors. It's a beautiful May I wine. Put it over here. Yes. As long as you know, this is my class there. <laughs> Gunther, though, you'd really appreciate him as a winemaker. Uh, he, he makes wine like you cook. You well, know? one of those days, I'm, I'm sure to meet the man and... and uh, no, I told him I'd be, I'd be using your wine uh, today uh, in uh, preparing duck, and he was really thrilled. So, thank you, Gunther. <laughs> Actually, you know what I just think? Mm. Uh, something off the cuff here. Mm -hmm. Give me a little red wine into my chanterelles here. Just say one. Okay, that's it. Good. Now, normally I would tell people use a white wine. Yet uh, today we're very quite modern. We're using um, red wine with salmon. We're using it with mm -hmm. halibut, with sole. So why couldn't we use beautiful red wine with the chanterelle? Uh, now here I could use a little of your peppermill there, which okay. you mentioned before. Uh, my new peppermill. Your yeah. new peppermill, green, yes. Okay, that's it. That's it. Okay. Thank no, you. Just getting carried away. Just getting carried away. Well, you can. Uh, you know, put some more in here if you want, <laughs> just for... We have, we have a couple of minutes left, so maybe right. we should take the, uh, yeah, the, the duck, duck out. Yeah. Now, to be expedient, we've, we have another duck uh, cooking away. I can't remember where it is. Uh, here's the blueberries. I'm going to put them in here. Okay. This will darken up the sauce a little bit. Oh, I actually even have beautiful. a little demi-glaze here. Now uh, this is uh, a little of my stock here, which uh, should just give it a little more shine. But it's, up, it's not necessary, but I just happen to have it, so I put it in there. Now, if we shut this off, otherwise I'm going to lose my hair on my arm. That's right. <laughs> it's a beautiful platter. And also, you, you saw me, I, I never used any, any salt. And again, the reason is this butter I'm using right here is salted butter. Ah. We have the chanterelle flavor, we have the shallot flavor, we have a little pepper, and you really don't need any more than this. Because also, you can overdo... That was smart. Do you want your duck? Yes, please. You can overdo... Uh, Never touch the handle of a pan yes. after it's just come out of the after it's been sitting in the oven at 500, 400, whatever degrees for half an hour. <laughs> All right, now give me that duck. But I have asbestos hands, so it's okay. Maybe put that there. Yeah, that's great. Now the, to cut the duck is really quite simple, and as I said, I do know a lot of people are always afraid to open, to, to cut the duck, but you just take the two legs off, just like you do in a chicken. You go inside to make sure you get all the meat out. And you have one leg. A 
break that little bone off. You have a second leg, and then it's usually a little fat that's left there, and if at all possible, Just remove it. Yeah. Okay. So there's our leg. There's one leg. Here's another leg. Okay, now I, uh, maybe you give me the vegetables out, the tomatoes and... Oh, the you bet. Oh, listen to that duck, the other duck, our first duck. Oh, I love that sound. So what I would actually do when that duck is cooked in there, I would uh, remove some of the fat from the frying pan. Mm -hmm. I'll take a little of the red wine, mm -hmm. maybe uh, three ounces, and I would leave it inside the frying pan until the residue that is now on the bottom comes off. Right. And then I would add it to my sauce. So you would deglaze the pan with a little wine yes. and then add it to the sauce. Yeah. Gorgeous. Well, you take that off, eh? I take that off, and then yeah, usually the guy that. in the kitchen would eat yeah. this. You know? <laughs> That'd be me eating that. We only have a little bit of time to put this together. Okay. So. It's amazing how fast the time goes. Yeah, and you have fun. Yeah. But cooking is always fun. Yeah, you know, it is. Gary. I think it's important to have fun. Have fun with it. Actually, cooking is a hard profession. And if you couldn't have a little fun while you're doing it, you shouldn't be doing it. It really would be... Uh, it would be too, too much work. It would be a lot of hardship, yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, people like yourself who I invite on, on, onto the program are... These guys are incredible technicians. You know, they have a lot of knowledge, years of experience, formal professional training. But people like Bruno, they're people who love to cook with a lot of heart and they're passionate about their art. But we always, we always hope that the people who... The people who come to eat do take a minute and think about the people who made the food. Mostly between 7 and 9 in the evening, everybody mm -hmm. wants to eat at the same time. Of course, everyone comes in at once. And uh, you know, cooks do work quite hard. And that, but I do think that, uh, uh, particularly in Vancouver, we have really made quite a, a change in our food scene in the last 15 years. And I think that people do appreciate when they go out and dine. Because There's more I awareness do, I do food quite and food and wine and appreciating. Listen, while, while you put this together, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to close the show because we've got to right. go. We're out of time. All right, there we go. And that's the way it goes when, uh, when you do these things live to tape. So um, for Chefs of Our Town, my name is Gary Fessler. Uh, my guest tonight has been uh, my friend, Bruno Marty, executive chef, owner of La Bella Barish Restaurant. He is great, one of the best in Canada. I so, thank you, Gary. Hey, thanks. It was my pleasure. Have some wine. Oh, you got to finish this. Okay. I just have well, we better go. So uh, until here. next time, please enjoy yourselves, eat well, and uh, maybe have, you know, maybe drink well too. Bye-bye. Facilities provided by the De Brule French Culinary School. Cookware and accessories used on Chefs About Town provided by the Cook Shop at Coquitlam Centre. Global stainless steel knives provided by Chuchkas Design Limited. Chefs About Town is made possible by funding provided in part by Grey Monk Estate Winery, producers of distinctive wines for discriminating taste, all approved with the Vintners Quality Alliance seal your assurance of international excellence. And the whole kitchen caboodle from gadgets to gourmet. The whole kitchen caboodle at City Square has what you need. And Souk Harbor House, a restaurant inn by the sea on Vancouver Island. Purveyors of regional Canadian cuisine are proud to be sponsors of British Columbia's food and wine arts program, Chefs About Town. <laughs>